You will never contribute to an organization that will give you a higher probability of having your good intentions turn into real positive changes in other people's lives. That will give you a better chance than what you've done here tonight. His single biggest speech payday came from the Swedish telecom company Ericsson. And it's a very, very unusual and troubling story. Our true seekers, in this thread, Michael Corey lays out a web of interconnections of the telecom giant Ericsson, demonstrating the profound irony of this giant's ability to control emergency services telecommunications while being a foreign business with America's enemies. Somehow, even Michael Sussman winds up in the story. Let's begin first with the headline, Telecom company Ericsson gave millions to ISIS in Iraq, report says, 9 slash 1 slash 1. Your phone's connection needs to be ported over to emergency services. The company controlling the process is Ericsson. In February 2022, CEO admitted that Ericsson funded and bribed ISIS from 2000 to 2017. So how do we get here? So here he presents a justice.gov link showing that Ericsson had to pay a billion dollars to resolve violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, the FCPA. From the website, we'll look at some highlighted portions. We have the penalty, 520 million and approximately 540 million to be paid to the SEC. The case was assigned to District Judge Allison Nathan, SDNY, that's the Southern District of New York. Assistant Attorney General Benzowski is quoted as saying, Erickson's corrupt conduct involved high-level executives and spanned 17 years in at least five countries, all in a misguided effort to increase profits. Erickson admitted to a years-long campaign of corruption in five countries. Through slush funds, bribes, gifts, and graft, Erickson conducted telecom business with guiding principle that money talks. And so here we're quoting Jeffrey Berman. SDNY, a U.S. attorney. U.S. attorney Berman, who I just quoted, was forced to step down. He says, I have not resigned and I have no intention of resigning my position to which I was appointed by the judges of the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. I will step down when a presidentially appointed nominee is confirmed by the Senate. And so now the controversial Attorney General William Barr was the one who nominated his replacement, Jay Clayton, to be U.S. attorney of Southern District of New York. And here's Jay Clayton's profile. He previously worked as chair of the SEC, January 2017, nominated by President Trump. Now, going back in time, September 29th, 2010, the SEC had communicated with the company Ericsson, Swedish telecom giant. As you know, Cuba, Iran, Sudan, Syria are countries that are identified by the U.S. Department of State as sponsors of terrorism and are subject to U.S. sanctions and export controls. Uh, here's that communication by the SEC to Ericsson. At that time, Ericsson was in hot water with Hillary Clinton's State Department for trading with the enemy state in Iran. And here's a video that opened the clip. Now, Ericsson is a Swedish telecom company that in 2009 and 2010 was in trouble with Hillary Clinton's State Department because Ericsson was selling a lot of telecom equipment to Iran, to Belarus, and to other oppressive governments about which the State Department was concerned. Ericsson risked being put on a list by the federal government in the United States for trading with an enemy state. There was actually an effort being put forward in Washington to broaden Iranian sanctions to include the very technologies that Ericsson was selling to the Iranian government. So it's against this background that Ericsson decided now might be a good time to hire Bill Clinton to give a speech. They had never paid for a speech by him before, and they decided to go in big, $750,000 for a single speech. Seven days after he gave that speech, Hillary's State Department came out with a statement which said, we are not going to broaden sanctions on Iran to include technologies like telecom. We're going to rely and expect companies like Ericsson to police themselves. It was a massive win for Ericsson. Ericsson was able to avoid having to deal with a regulatory battle in Washington, giving up contracts that were highly lucrative in these countries, and being put on a list that would create an enormous diplomatic problem for them all because essentially they paid Bill Clinton to give a speech for $750,000. Will you continue to give speeches? Oh yeah, I, I gotta pay our bills. And so then he lays out this timeline of events that were suspicious in sequence. November 28, 2010, a US diplomatic cables leak, widely known as Cablegate, part of a series known as Plus D. December 1st, Amazon kicks WikiLeaks off their servers. December 2nd, Interpol office in Gothenburg, Sweden issues fresh arrest warrant for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. So here's the arrest warrant from Sweden. And here you see a headline. I don't have the source of this. WikiLeaks website pulled by Amazon after U.S. political pressure. Now it turns out the source is The Guardian. 
One day later, December 3rd, U.S. blocks access to WikiLeaks for federal workers. And here you see a WikiLeak drop that shows Swedish-Iranian economic relations, business as usual, resistance to financial sanctions. This was in December of a year previous, 2009, from the document, Behind the Swedish government's reluctance to support further sanctions in Iran, especially unilateral European measures, is a dynamic trade involving some of Sweden's largest and most politically well-connected companies, Volvo, Ericsson, and ABB, to name three. The Iranian immigrant community in Sweden, at roughly 100k, is one of the largest in Europe. In the context of discussions on restricting financial transfers by Swedish citizens of Iranian origin, sanctions coordinator Salah told us that Swedish government will not take any actions that might restrict their civil liberties. February 2008, Sweden signed a bilateral investment treaty with Iran. The Swedish government is critical of Iran where human rights are concerned, but advocates maintaining a dialogue with Iran and encouraging trade with Iran. Sweden blocked an effort by other EU states to add two telecom firms in Syria with commercial links to Swedish firm Ericsson. I do not know why, but there's an article that discusses it. He quotes Joe Biden. Julian Assange is a high-tech T-word. We go forward to October 21st, 2011. Barack Obama announces total withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq. ISIL fades into obscurity for several years after the surge of U.S. troops to Iraq in 2007. It began to re-emerge in 2011. Over the next few years, it took advantage of growing instability in Iraq and Syria to carry out attacks and bolster its ranks, with Ericsson's help, of course. And so you see this image with a flag of Ericsson and a vehicle. It appears to be Photoshop. In 2012, an executive order was issued blocking property and suspending entry into the United States of certain persons with respect to grave human rights abuses by governments of Iran and Syria. So seemingly that would implicate Ericsson, but it doesn't, as you'll soon see. So let's recap. Since 2008, Ericsson is known to be trading with an enemy state in Iran. The SEC knew. The State Department knew. U.S. authorities knew because Ericsson was cooperating in 2013. So we have this screenshot. Ericsson presided over corrupt conduct in Iraq even after it acknowledged in 2013 that it was cooperating with U.S. authorities investigating bribery allegations elsewhere. The U.S. probe, which does not mention Iraq, resulted in a $1 billion bribery settlement in 2019. Yes, the source of this. We're at the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, and this is the article title. You can scroll down and you get to that portion. In 2013, FCC put the local number portability administrator contract up for bid. That's New Star and Telcordia, which is also called Ericsson. It appears Telcordia was acquired in 2011. So the local number portability administrator contract is very important. Only New Star and Ericsson were the bidders. Let that sink in. The government knew that Ericsson, what Ericsson was up to, and they chose to ignore it or defer action. And so here he quotes an article. One concern was that the FCC didn't include national security requirements in the initial bid process. The source of this quote is Mary Talk. FCC deal with foreign owned company raises security and transparency concerns from 2016. So that article came out years after the contract was offered. In a 2016 New York Times piece, it's quoted, Evidence emerged several months ago that Telcordia had improperly used a small number of foreign nationals, including one Chinese citizen, to do computer coding for early work on the system after Telcordia was given preliminary approval for the job. And so here at this point, uh, Michael draws in other connections. Representing Newstar and Rodney Joth before the FCC against Telcordia, in quotes, Telcordia was... The indicted Perkins Coie attorney, Michael Sussman. So now think back to the Durham probe and how this person's implicated. And so a document is presented which shows that the attorney, Michael Sussman, of Perkins Coie, is for prepare on behalf of Newstar. And so here in the summary, you see um, Erickson responds to concerns by Newstar. First, Erickson now accepts that security concerns identified by Newstar are serious, and second, it concedes that the need to protect against compromise of the law enforcement platform. Third, it recognizes that reusing LNPA code around the world is risky. And fourth, it appears to accept that disruption of phone service is an emergency is also a legitimate security concern. Erickson also concedes that each of these concerns must be mitigated by security measures. Also working on Newstar's behalf is Hogan Lovells, Inc. Michael notes that the Clinton email investigation started in Eastern District of New York, where Tercordia is, was then moved to SDNY. And then he asks, how corrupt is SDNY, the Southern District of New York? So here in this Hogan Lovells document, you see this highlighted material. Michael Sussman of Perkins Coie and Michael Fakahar of Hogan Lovells, collectively Newstar. So showing that Newstar Lovells association. Hogan Lovells deserves its own video. For now, it should be noted that Loretta Lynch was made partner while working with the Washington headquartered international law firm from March 2002 through April 2010. The firm 
would curiously change its name in May of 2010, one month after Lynch's departure. Hogan, Hartson, Hogan, and Lovells was and has remained Farah registered to represent Saudi Arabia dating back to 2009. Mills has been director of the Clinton Foundation while receiving donations from Lovells. So just to keep up here, that's basically a New Star Clinton Foundation type of connection. And so that's why against was put in quotes. And then Michael just reminds us of the various important cases that fell under SDNY jurisdiction. So that's the Wiener evidence collection, you know, Anthony Wiener. Clinton Foundation investigation, Epstein evidence collection, Ghislaine Maxwell case, the Trump tax returns, and the SEC versus Ripple Labs case, all in the same district. He brings our attention to this recent article. Go ahead and click through the link there. Leak exposes Erickson's secret dealings with ISIS amid Iraq corruption spree, February 27, 2022. And in this article, Iran seeks tech in Sweden for nuclear weapons. And so keep in mind what we'd read to you before about there being a, a large Iranian population in the country of Sweden. A damning section states that Iran also conducts industrial espionage, which is mainly targeted against Swedish high-tech industry and Swedish products, which can be used in nuclear weapons programs. Iran is investing heavy resources in this area, and some of its resources are used in Sweden. These are findings in the Sweden Security Service 2020 intelligence report. And it's considered that Iran, China, and Russia are Sweden's biggest security threats, according to the report. All right, so back to this. So Ericsson supports T-Word and controls our numbers portability contract. Pretty alarming. Find out how we plan to use this information to hold people in positions of power accountable through plus ultra action reports through the links below. And so he links to that organization he founded. Ultra.org. So why didn't the FCC include national security requirements for those who could bid for that important contract? I don't know, but this does give you a sense of why people are having trouble with trusting the SEC. I think much of the distrust amongst what you may describe as the normies relates to the SEC Ripple lawsuit, which has financially harmed tens of thousands of investors at the minimum. This thread is highly detailed, but it does lay a trail for the the reader to determine one pattern of corrupt combination the business interests with foreign national interests. So I submit this to the blockchain for the permanent record. Till next time, peace.